Hello and welcome. Today we would read about the story uh, ABC Antidote by Ishmael Bear. And let me first introduce Ishmael Bear to you. He is a Sierra Leonean author and human rights activist who rose to fame uh, because of his acclaimed memoir which is called A Long Way Gone. It was released in 2007. And he also wrote another novel which is called Radiance of Tomorrow and was published in 2014. <coughs> And Bea is actually also known to be an activist and especially an activist for the rights of children and the rights of education for children and he's been working closely with UNICEF. Um, and this is because he was actually orphaned by the civil war in Sierra Leone when he was um, and he lost his parents and his two brothers to war. And um, eventually he was also recruited into the army and he was when he was just a 13 year old boy and he actually fought war. And his memoir is actually about his experience of fighting war. He eventually got rehabilitated and uh, he later on became a UNICEF activist advocating the rights of children. Um, and in his writings, uh, he talks about, uh, you know, the very uh, things that he's gone through, the effects of war on the psyche of people who have to go through war and how war changes the way uh, a person thinks and his instincts completely transforms uh, them. And um, so his second work is also about war uh, and the fact that even after war is over, the society is actually carry the burden of uh, this particular war and he writes about a poignant example where you know a person after some years after the war has been over uh, two friends meet and the, uh, one of the friends is extremely anxious to even see the other friend for fear of seeing an amputation. Now these are very uh, key ways in which the war would affect the way you think uh, and the war would completely wound you and the way you would perceive the world um, and so therefore even after the war has already taken place people have their own ways of uh, you know doing away with those uh, bad memories and also holding on to a happier time now um, the story actually begins with uh, an introduction of two boys uh, who are called Fode and Abu and we are introduced to these boys and the text says Fode and Abu, and I'm quoting from the text, Fode and Abu now lived in the capital city where they did menial jobs such as carrying heavy loads, uh, selling cigarettes on the street and anything that was lucrative to pay for their secondary school fees. They ate one meal a day to save money to finish secondary school and start university. Sometimes that meal was only dried loaf of bread and they soaked it in water and added sugar. So, Basically, you know, these two boys, very much like Bea himself, are from a war-torn area and they are now probably with this host country, with a different uh, country and this capital city is actually a country which is not their own uh, country. And they have been given this shelter and though this new place is not mentioned in Bea's case, it was uh, the United States. And when these boys join the university, they have saved up for a long time for this moment. And during the first uh, class, the professor asks them a question about education. And uh, most students just, you know, give very staple answers. They say that it's a right. But Fode says that it is a right only if you belong to a peaceful society. And that's when, um, you know, the professor asks them a little more, probes them a little further, uh, but the reader is introduced to a flashback. And that's when we, the story breaks there and we go into a flashback. And uh, we now know that these boys have actually lived a very hard life before this because they were both boy soldiers. Now, what are boy soldiers? Let me just um, tell you uh, what is this societal problem like. Now, in countries like Sierra Leone and many other countries like that, boys or children who had already lost their families and are virtually alone, they are recruited by the government to fight war. So, even though they are recruited by the government, they are basically trying to defend their country but they have, you have to remember that these are minors and um, they are more in need of love, rehabilitation, education 
um, rather than you know rigorous work hours and just the duty to fight and unlike a uh, an adult soldier who willingly goes to war even if the, you know he's fighting the war uh, for his country he does that willingly um, and he's not himself a victim of war here you know these children are mostly just often victims of war um, so these rights uh, the children the rights of these children are clearly violated you know the basic human rights they should get the rights to right to choose a means of livelihood but they are forced to be in war they also have the right to be educated, which Bia is most emphatic about. Um, so the right to life and the right to education, these are core basic rights which are denied to these boys. Um, and in one of the interviews, Bia also says that, you know, these children are often told that each, each war crime that they commit, uh, each killing that they do, be it of anybody, is like a revenge on their families. Um, and the losses that they have incurred through war. Um, but, you know, if you think about it, it's actually adding to the trauma of these boys. Moreover, when these boys or when these children fight uh, war, they also fight their own instincts of self-preservation and they have to bear the risk of being uh, damaged, maimed, amputated by war. Um, and often they have to repress their memories of childhood as well. So it's mentally physically very very traumatic for these children and above all when Bia talks about this experience he clearly talks about the very feelings that these children have to overcome in order to survive war and they also are brainwashed in the process and they are often afraid of the commanders who are uh, you know who they have to report to in the story itself we are also told that the commander um, uh, orders them some things and this children are just forced to do that um, so they have to suppress themselves at multiple levels and again i've uh, said this before but this problem is not just about sierra leone but another country uh, for instance sudan is also facing such issues now uh, now I've talked about what who a child soldier is. Now I come back to the story. Fode goes back to his memories of war when they have to fight, which the war they have, they have to fight in uh, around the school. So she, he talks, he thinks of the, this time when they had to actually be in war and they have to fight in and around a school. Um, and even when they had to make a fire, they had to throw all the furniture into the fire and when he's doing that he is actually um, he accidentally sees some papers and these are the papers of secondary school uh, children have written something and this is something that he has himself studied uh, which is a lesson in history and he's you know immediately is reminded of the teacher who used to teach them the way he used to teach them the way he would uh, he would um, tell the children to wonder he would really nurture their feelings of wonder however you know when he's just you know he's taking a moment off to read that paper he is immediately reprimanded of um, for doing from for doing that by a commander and the commander orders him and says and i read the text throw the paper in the fire soldier we are not here to read but to fight a war commander prophet interrupted for these thoughts yes sir he said and threw the papers into the fire the commander shook his head and spoke loudly for everyone to hear you are now receiving another kind of education which is to stay alive and kill those who want to destroy this country you cannot do that by reading you can only do that by listening to me understand um so this is this was unquote this was the quote from the text so you know um, Fode listens to the commander uh, and you know they are able to defend that territory that day but after the event of that day is over he sits in silence and he's reminded of the school life that he had um, and he has a lot of pain in his heart and very unconsciously he even starts singing a song when he closes his eyes when he opens his eyes he sees that other people have gathered around him and um, they are actually watching him and when he asks them why they are all standing around him they tell him that he was singing he was singing very unconsciously and he did not know that he had actually broken into a song uh, and this is where you know as a reader we get to know that these boys have to repress themselves so much that they are not even allowed to hum a song uh, and I read from the, quote, the text, quote, some boys have been stabbed to death once 
because while guarding a post they had started singing their song quietly not knowing that commander prophet was standing behind them unquote so these children are actually um, really forced into war now commander prophet now look at this word commander prophet it's such an ironic oxymoronic name by oxymoron we mean that the word commander and prophet are actually opposites of each other right he's a commander um, but he's and a commander is somebody who tells people to fight and attack whereas the prophet is supposed to give people spiritual lessons and um, and he a prophet is actually a respectable figure in the society um, whereas a commander is forcing children to kill so this is just a, such an ironic name for them and it means that in a war ravaged country in a war ravaged society such people who make um, violence their profession these are the people who are respected uh, but you know these things change in war everybody changes in war um, but the children know how to uh, you know empathize with each other so commander prophet asks them to do, do some some things orders them to do some things but the children empathize these boy soldiers empathize with each other and they know that they are all repressing the same feelings they are all going through similar emotions they know that now uh, that some of them have been singing these songs from their childhood in sleep and un very unconsciously um, but they have to survive war so they have to start thinking of ways in which they can muffle these songs in some way or another um, you know just in case somebody starts unconsciously humming a member uh, a song which they are reminded of they should not be killed for this singing this song and as an audience when we read this we are again uh, you know reminded of the fact that the soldiers are simply a means to an end they are also you know the victims of the war that they are a part of um, and virtually they are helpless when even they want to address some of their feelings of nostalgia and loss now they've actually lost their parents right they would be in need of love they would be in need of rehabilitation they would be in need of um, you know counseling but they're given none of this and um, and why are these they're singing songs because you know singing is also very often a coping mechanism when you sing you are able to express yourself you are able to express a, rep uh, a repressed memory a repressed emotion uh, and they have to do this because there are immense feelings of loss and pain in their heart but they are not allowed to do that and they cannot reclaim their past they only have their memories uh, and these happy memories would actually help them reduce trauma um, but they are prohibited from singing instead what they have to sing is a war squad song and this is a song is we fight for this country we fill, kill for this country and we die for this country we are soldiers in the army of freedom with the barrel of our guns we will seek the truth and free this country now this particular song is very impersonal right it doesn't have any it, it doesn't offer any solace to uh, these children um, all they have to do is sing in this song is the uh, is, is for the feeling of valor um, but it doesn't do anything to address the feeling of pain right and they decide um, that so the children actually come up with a scheme they say that whenever somebody unconsciously even in their sleep when they start singing a song the others will start singing the squad song so that the sounds of the uh, childhood songs are muffled and nobody can actually hear that childhood song so they are not punished with severe punishments like death and finally this is the only way the children are able to hold on to their past uh, and a part of their past life until the war is over now this is where the flashback ends and we come back the story breaks again here and we come back to the first scene where the reader is again re uh, is reintroduced to the scene in the class where the teacher had asked this question about education and Fode was actually uh, talking about his ideas on education and Fode gives gives us something to be um, you know careful about when we think about education and he says 
uh, and this is how the story actually ends he says education is the most powerful medicine that cures violence it strengthens the mind to resist violence to transform the elements of violence which are fear and loss of self of course one has to have some basic understanding of reality in general education can reawaken the mind and spirit after it has been broken now read these lines carefully he says that education is the only way you can reawaken a mind which has already been broken reawaken a spirit that has already been broken it can transform the elements of violence and the loss of self so the people who have who are actually who have lost themselves who have lost their identities to war education can actually help them nurture themselves and find their spirits back um so this is where the story actually ends now um this story is actually a very nicely written um story which is a very self explanatory it's very easy for students to resonate with the story um but i want to draw your attention to the title of the story why is the title abc antidote it basically means that education education in the sign in the sign of abc the abc of education is the antidote to hatred and war the antidote to violence so he emphasizes the education um, that education is the only possible solution to the issues created by war especially the issues associated with children childhood okay so this is what the story is um, please let me know if you understood this story um, and let me know if there are any other stories which you would want me to comment about thank you i'll see you again